Right, hello and um, welcome to the first part of our um, A-level look at waves. Um, this is a continuation of the previous lessons that I've put up, um, where it's a key stage four, it's a set of nine lessons of key stage four look at waves. So, so this is a continuation from, uh, from here, or from there even. What we're going to look at in this series of lessons, um, as I said, is this uh, unit two um, section of the module of the AQA specification, uh, look at waves. So we're going to look at what what's meant by the words progressive waves. Um, we're going to look at the differences, a, a more in-depth look at the differences between longitudinal and transverse waves, which you all remember from key stage four. Uh, we're going to look at refraction of plane surface and this TIR, this total internal refract, uh, reflection. Again, we looked at that key stage four. We're going to go into a little bit more depth with that. Um, going to explain what's meant by the name, uh, by the uh, by the word of superposition of waves and what stationary waves are. Um, all the way through this, there's going to be things that we're going to refer to as interference. Uh, we're going to look into exactly what that is, what is meant by interference and um, diffraction again, which we did have a look at key stage four. We're going to go into a lot more depth with um, this A level look at what diffraction actually is. Um, so what we're going to start off, as I said here, with um, progressive waves. So as we know from um, key stage four, we have two main types of waves, or progressive waves. We have our transverse and we have our longitudinal. So as we know that the transverse, the vibration is at 90 degrees to the movement or to the motion of the wave, whereas with longitudinal waves, uh, the vibration is travelling along the same path as the movement in the wave for that. So for transverse is at 90 degrees, longitudinal it's in the same direction. So um, this is again now looking at um, what we start off at key stage four. Um, wavelength, which we should know by now, is obviously, surprisingly enough, the length of one complete wave. So from one point, so from here to here would be one wavelength, same as it's marked out here and here. Um, as I said, as we said at key stage four, it doesn't matter where you actually take the measurement from as long as the measurements that are are from one place in the wave to the exactly the same place in the next wave. So there's a wavelength there, there's a wavelength there, again there would be another wavelength here. So as long as you take it from one point of the wave and carry it to exactly the same point on the next wave, it doesn't matter, that is your wavelength. Um, amplitude, as we know now, um, is the uh, measurement of maximum disturbance. So remember, it's not from here to the t from the peak down to the trough. What it actually is is from the peak to the zero disturbance line, or alternatively, alternatively, from the trough to the zero disturbance line. So remember, if you take the whole, if you take this whole measurement here, you need to halve it to make sure you get the amplitude. Alternatively, just go from the trough or the peak back down to the zero disturbance line. Okay. Um, the next one we're looking at is something called time period. Now you may come across it at key stage four, but generally it does come in now at A level. Now time period is basically a unit of time from where a complete wave travels past a point. Now this is in relation to one second. So for example, this complete wave here could pass a point and it could take 0.2 of a second. Therefore the time period would be 0.2. So it's always in relation to a second. So how, many, um, how long in a second one wave would take? So it would be a percentage of that second unless obviously it's a really, really long wave. Um, so generally it's a percentage or a decimal of one second. So that's our time period. And frequency, obviously we know, frequency is the number of complete waves that go past a point per second. So the number, the number of waves is our frequency. So how many, how frequent those waves are. So there again, those are the main points, those are the main things to remember. So our wavelength, one complete wave, so from one point to the same point in the following wave. Amplitude, which is from the highest peak or the lowest trough back to that zero disturbance line. Not the whole thing, just the zero disturbance line. Our time period, how long, it, uh, how long it, in comparison to a second it takes for one complete wave to go past a point. And frequency, how many of those waves go past that point in a second. 
Okay? So, continuing on, this is our wave equation. Again, you'll remember this, or you should remember this from key stage four. Uh, this is generally used to work out the speed of a wave. Um, so, as we've got our nice equation triangle here, speed is equal to frequency multiplied by the wavelength. So we've got, these obviously this equation triangle can be used to work out any of the three, as long as you obviously have two of the others. We know sound, generally the speed of sound um, is 340 meters per second, and we know the speed of light is roughly 300 million meters per second. So a lot of the time you would use this equation to work out either the frequency or the wavelength. But that is our uh, equation triangle to work out. Again, you should remember this from key stage four, really. Um, so this is the new thing at A-level. Um, don't come across this at key stage four. This is something called phase. Now, phase is basically uh, described as what, at what point of a wave cycle that, that it's at. So at what point of this wave you're at depends on what phase you are at. Okay? Now phase is put down as an angle, so it's in degrees. Okay? So with this little diagram we just showed here, if you have, for example, you have a circle here, and what we're doing here is as our circle point moves up, as so does our wave. We'll play this again. So as it moves up, the wave moves up. As the angle goes back down to zero, it gets back to our zero dis uh, disturbance. Goes down to, a, down to 270 degrees, which is your uh, maximum disturbance down in your trough, and then goes back to level again, back to zero disturbance. So as I said, phase is described as degrees, described as an angle. The reason for this again is because exactly like what we have here is set out in a circle, so that plot can actually that the plot of that circle can be plotted laterally across our graph. So as this moves up, so we start getting up to the peak. We start getting up to the peak of our wave. So the peak of our wave, the phase angle at the peak of a wave that starts at zero, the peak angle is 90 degrees. Okay. So as it continues. That then means that once it actually gets back down to zero disturbance, I didn't quite catch it in time here, as it gets down to zero disturbance, it's back at 180 degrees. It would be at here what effectively, if you think of it like a clock, would be nine o'clock. So if we start off at three o'clock here, by the time we get to 12 o'clock, we're at the top peak, we're at the peak of our weight, so that's at 90 degrees. By the time we get down to zero disturbance again, we're back at 180 degrees. So we've gone a full half distance of our phase angle, okay? So as we get down to the trough, the trough is actually at 270 degrees. Again, this makes sense because we start off at zero, our peak is then at 90, we then get back to zero at 180, so then we would expect our trough to be another 90 degrees, which will be this 270 degrees down here at the bottom or at the trough of our wave and then again we go back up until the point that we get back to zero so this would be 360 degrees what it actually means is that once it's got to that complete wave one complete wave is 360 degrees so we go start from zero we get to our peak which is 90 back down to our zero point which is our half wavelength so that's half so it's going to be 180 degrees we're going to get down to our trough here so that's three quarters of the way, so that's 270 degrees, and then we're back to zero again, so we've gone full circle, so we've gone 360 degrees. As I then went back onto the second wavelength, it would then start from zero again. So what, what's, what's the point of this? What's the point of having phase and describing it as angles? Well, we have something called interference, which we will get to in a later lesson. But what we do, just to briefly describe how, how you would use phase, um, there's two types of interference. There's constructive interference and there's destructive interference. So here we have two waves here, and they would say it's meant to have the same phase cycle because their peaks are in the same place, their troughs are in the same place, so they're actually peaking and troughing together. So what actually happens, it becomes constructive because these waves, as they're traveling at the same 
place and through the same medium with the same wavelength and the same frequency, they actually combine. So the wavelength stays the same uh, and the frequency stays the same. But what actually happens is the amplitude is actually a sum collectively of the two waves together. So in this case, the amplitude is doubled. But this is only happens when the phase is in the same phase cycle. So they have, they have the same phase angle all the way through. A destructive interference is something that's said to have um, 180 degrees phase difference. So this means that when there's a trough in your wave at the bottom, there's actually a peak here. And when there's a trough here, sorry, when there's a trough in the top, there's a peak in your bottom one. So what they're actually doing is they're completely cancelling each other out because at each point they're exactly opposite. So what they do is when they add together, they actually create zero. So this is said to have a phase difference of 180 degrees because, as we said, a peak it becomes a trough. So therefore, it's at the other spectrum of our full phase angle. So it's through 180 degrees flipped, so it's completely the opposite of the other wave. So these add together to make zero, which makes them destructive because it then means that that wave just becomes a flat line, instead of our constructive where the wave becomes twice the amplitude. We don't quite get that, don't worry about it too much. We will come back into interference later on in our lessons. But that's just the basic, remember, constructive and destructive interference. Uh, constructive is where the phase angles are the same, and, dest and destructive is where they're the opposites and they cancel each other out. That's just the basics of that. We will get into more interference later on, as I said. So that's the first lesson where we're looking at progressive waves. So we've had a look again at the two different types of waves, what we mean by amplitude, frequency, wavelength, speed, and by period and time period. Um, and our first look at um, phase angle and our first look of interference. Um, our next lesson, we're going to go back into a little bit more detail about the difference between longitudinal and transverse waves, what well, they're different for, and um, yeah, the differences between them. Uh, yeah, that's the end of today's lesson. As I said, uh, my name's Ian McDowell, I'm a student at Brighton University. Thank you.